uh, very soon. But from our Abuja end, there already have two uh, gentlemen seated uh, to do justice to the topic, like you rightly mentioned, youth involvement in government. Uh, it's no longer news that uh, the new administration, uh, let me simply put it that way, is less than uh, uh, it's less than 100 days uh, for now, and they are still counting. Uh, I've inaugurated these uh, ministers, and we have quite very vibrant uh, youth among that uh, uh, cabinet. And if you remember during his campaign promises, even when the president was sworn in, said he was going to give attention uh, to the youth. So uh, this time we're going to be looking at the prospects of these new ministers, the youth, and then the involvement of uh, youth in governance. So I have two, like I said, uh, from my far right is our regular uh, public affairs analyst, uh, Peter, A.K. Peters. A very good morning to you, Peters. It's my pleasure. Yeah, so I have uh, just close to me here, uh, Mike Anthony is an FCT youth advocate. Very good morning to you, good morning. Mike. All right, let me begin with you, Peters. I know from the states you heard from, you have a very vibrant uh, youth uh, Minister for Humanitarian Affairs, uh, Beta Edu. Uh, let's begin from there, her choice as a minister. She's uh, below 40. Uh, what's your take uh, when you, uh, from the beginning when she was uh, nominated down to when she uh, got the appointment? We saw it coming. Mm. Beta is a young woman who had washed her hands clean in the presence of elders. She had distinguished herself, being a trailblazer at all times. She was the first, and I would say, premier executive director of the Cross River State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, a former honorable commissioner for health in Cross River State, the youngest. She became the chairman of committee of commissioners of health in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She distinguished herself during the COVID-19 era. She became the youngest woman leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress, and she did so well during the campaign. Small wonder, at 36, she has become an honorable minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. Just like you said, coming from my state, Cross River, that still has the record of having the youngest minister ever in the history of Nigeria, mm. and that is the late Chief Ambassador Dr. Matthew Mbu, who was a cabinet minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at 24. Mm. Cross River State have always blazed the trail in giving out their very best from the very from a very young age. Even at the time we had one of the youngest governors, I would many believe did that, not that do well. That is still another history. Mm. Donald Duke was the youngest, the youngest governor ever to be elected mm. in Nigeria. Uh, let me come to uh, Mr. Anthony uh, for you to give us your own take on the appointments by the president of this uh, UT. You just mentioned one. We still have Tijani. We have uh, Prince Abdul, uh, Obe, uh, Prince uh, Abubakar Abdu, yes, Sherbu, the Minister of Steel, and then uh, State, for State for Mine and State, and then we have uh, Tijani for communication. Yes. Let's uh, get your view on these appointments. Okay, yeah, so far so good. Uh, the president has done well in terms of uh, youth and inclusion mm -hmm. in the uh, government. Most especially the gender parity. Uh, the, there's a clear departure from what we used to have. If you compare the appointment we have at the moment, uh, the good of Jonathan administration and that uh, this uh, former administration of uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, you see that. Uh, the president has actually stepped up a bit. Mm. We have um, close to about 25 percent in uh, women in uh, governance currently. And even the composition of these uh, um, SCs and SSEs, you have a handful of uh, women. But I think uh, the youth has not really been properly captured okay. in this current uh, administration because uh, you are aware that Nigeria has the youngest population in Africa mm. and um, to a large extent in the world because um, the youth compose of um, close to over 35% of the total population of uh, Nigeria. But the, there are still other appointments that um, we are anticipating that will be coming on board soon. 
So we hope that uh, we want to encourage this current administration to have more youth inclusion in, in governance. This will actually open the space for new um, style of our leadership. So uh, in, in essence now, what you're trying to say now, is you are not too uh, okay with the percentage the reshufflement of the recently reshufflement that was done uh, the original men and all that but what areas particularly feel the president needed to do more as far as the youth's involvement in government is concerned okay i'm not too sure as regards whether we don't have a minister for sport i think we have a no, Minister for Youth. Yes, Minister youth. for Youth mm -hmm. Development. Yes. Because, because the both ministries have been divided now. Yes, to, to, to two uh, different uh, ministries. So apparently, the youth does not really have a representation in this, uh, in the current uh, cabinet formation of uh, Mr. President. Although the Mr. President has done well, like I said initially, in terms of um, women inclusion. But the youth, that is the male counterparts now, mm. uh, they ought to be part of this current administration. So I'm not really too, um, uh, let me see, I don't know how to put it. I'm not too really too uh, convinced as regards the numbers of um, youths. Okay, let me take this over again, sorry. Um, I'm not really too happy with the numbers of um, youth representation mm. in this current uh, administration. Uh, the, the administration of uh, President Bola and to open the space for more youth to come. And, uh, okay, let, let me come back to AK Peters. I don't know whether you shared in this uh, opinion that we don't have much of our uh, youth in this administration. Looking at the numbers as so far, even from the ministerial uh, list in his own uh, personal aid, we also have some youth out there. I don't know whether. Uh, you told the same line with uh, Anthony. I, I expected more youths mm. to meet. I expected more youths to become ministers. And that is why I am not really happy that the National Assembly, the Senate particularly, wasn't able to clear Stella Okotete. Mm. Stella Okotete, for me, is another youth. She's below 40, she's 30 something years old. Uh, I would have wished that they cleared her also. Young people, the youths, are the spies of the society. Young people. people Are the basic essential ingredients going forward therefore i strongly like my colleague has uh, said are okay that more youth be brought into the government if not at the ministerial level at advisorial level and uh, as a uh, uh, assistant levels and uh, heads of agencies Department, intergovernmental, you know, uh, 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 departments, and all of that. When and if these youths are brought to government, you can see that we will have a good mix, and it is that mix give guidance and direction to the government. But how ready are the youth to take the mantle of authority in this country? Any form, any appointment, because. If you realize in the time pass, uh, many persons do not really want to give room to an Nigerian youth. That's why you keep having politicians recycling themselves uh, every, each time there is a uh, government. But do you think our Nigerian youth are really ready to uh, take this uh, mantle just the way Peter tried to portray them? Because in the first century, currently, the Nigerian youth are competing very well with their other uh, counterparts across the world uh, 
uh, Nigerian youths are doing us uh, very, very proud. If you look at the creative industry, we are having living in Africa. When you come to innovation uh, and ICT, you have a lot of our youths have actually made their mark and write their name in the sense of time mm. in, uh, in Nigeria. So bringing the youth on board with governance will actually bridge the gap of leadership between the old and the young. And that is where we can actually recruit um, leaders by bringing youth into governance. So why do we still have people uh, not having that confidence to give them chance to rule? Because right from when I was growing up, it keeps saying the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. And then we keep seeing these old people recycling themselves. For instance, now there is this argument that we, we have more of our governors who have uh, ruled for eight years. We have someone who has been a minister before, although he's not a minister of the FCT, and then coming back again. Our persons will tell you we need technocrats, and then we need uh, people with experience. Uh, the youth, do they really have that experience? Yeah, absolutely. The, the youth... You talked about entertainment industry and all that, but when it comes to politics, how much of uh, our, of our uh, presentation are we, is, it be, is felt in, uh, we, 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 in we politics? We have been represented in politics. And um, I, I would like to say this, that the older generation has not actually given uh, the youth that opportunity. Because if you look at other sectors of the economy, mm. not just even the creative um, industry alone, when you go to the banking sector, you can see how innovative sector is, it is actually almost fully driven by, by the youths in, in this country. I would like uh, this administration to actually take a cue from uh, what uh, the former governor of Alcabla State did, Manu Nasser El Dupai. He has been able to bring in a lot of youths in his administration at that time. You have youths who are many different um, heads of agency in uh, Kaduna State. Even the, the former chief of staff, I think was appointed perhaps at the age of uh, 41 or 42. And the guy did excellently well. So the only way we can actually bridge that gap of leadership is to give uh, youth a chance. From uh, the INET database, you may recall that almost 76% of uh, the newly registered voters are actually youth. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what that means is the youth should have fair representation to carry on leadership in this country. Now, let, me, let me come back to Peter. I'm looking at experience also. Like I earlier mentioned, where people tell you we need technocrats. And then other persons will tell you we need experience, like in the appointment we just saw recently, where eight governors were brought back and people are saying, no, why bring people who have made money from uh, ruling their state for eight years? We need technocrats, people with experience in different fields. Uh, of uh, endeavors, but is that the same thing applicable to the youth? Do we have the experienced youth to mount uh, such government's uh, positions? I think it's a mentality thing. The system only feels or believes that the youth are not capable. Mm. Going through history, the political history of Nigeria, the highest times, the best times of Nigeria was when the youths were in charge. After independence, those who ruled Nigeria were not old people. Even in the days of the military, when Nigeria was to be divided, it was a youth who ruled Nigeria then. All through these people, all through this era, you had the best of youths handling the affairs of the country. It was then that Nigeria was best in this, best in that, best in this, best in that, all over the world. Today, we are only first in corruption. No thanks to rulership by elders. Any society that wants to adopt the political system called gerontocracy, which is rulership by elders, with only very little progress. I can assure you that the young people in Nigeria are completely ready. They are very available. They are well trained. They have the strength, they have the dexterity, 
and even the experience to drive Nigeria to success in all sectors of the economy. Nigeria is the way we are because they have not given people a chance. You mentioned Aerofi. How was Aerofi identified? It was when he was a young person. When Aerofi was the Director General of BPE, Bureau of Public Enterprises, he was a young person. Aerofi became a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at 42 or there, there, uh, thereabout. Now, they still want to bring those people and keep recycling them. Can't we find or don't we have 100 new aerophiles in the population of the youth in politics today? Buari signed the uh, 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 not too young to run a law in Nigeria. The law is not young people. Politics is the striving to acquire power or to influence the distribution of power. Now, one thing that is keeping the youth where the youth are, things will be keeping the women where they are. Now, Nigerian politics involves a lot of money. We have so much on money politics. And the young people had opportunities to raise so much money that they will use into politics to contest because uh, politics in Nigeria requires so much to do. So much. Out of that, people are forced to just queue behind and just support and do the dirty job down for them and do the foot soldiering work for them. Time uh, during appointment favorably considered to man very, very good positions. Mm. I go back again to Cross River State, the example you see. We had the Young, the youngest senator today is Cross River State. See, from Cross River Southern Senatorial District, he was honourable commission of finance in Cross River State, and he, he did wonderfully well. Now, these young people who are given opportunity, you will see them do. The National Union of the Ruling of Civil Congress (APC) for Israel, a very young man, change the face. The APC over from uh, 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 also people who were young. So if this opportunity, they will excel, and that is why we were happy that Mr. Uh, he the, 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 the call of the people to give them a minister of youth development who is a young person. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Abubakar Momo is, is uh, 60, 65 years old. There was no need for you to make it old, uh, Honorable Minister of Youth Development. We pray and hope that when the president uh, assigns to that ministry, it will be yes. But let me tell you, the young people have everything it takes to drive leadership. Okay. And Put let, them side with the let, me, let me come back to Anthony. We're talking about experience and training. Now, this is of concern, mentorship. If you know, if you follow history, you know this God for that is thing. Somebody must mentor you for yet to a particular level. Even those, the, the elderly persons will tell you this, they pay allegiance to some persons they refer to as Godfather. And that's one thing that has been eating into our democracy, this God for that is in, uh, stigma. Now, let led you to the experience. How do we begin to gather the required training? How do you involve themselves or engage themselves for them to get that desired training? Since you cannot get it without being employed. You mentioned those in the public service or public sector where they've been doing very well at banking and the rest of them. Now, in terms, you know, politics is a different ball game entirely. So how do you begin to mentor them for them to get that it's everything in Nigeria is about politics. Well, it's about uh, advocacy. Mm. Advocacy is actually important that uh, we need young ones to actually participate in politics. When we do so, the young people see themselves or see some of their peers actually in the active politics is actually capital intensive. Mm. Place should actually be opened to actually participate. And, um, 
in terms of I think uh, the innovation, like I gave example of uh, uh, Malam Nasu Eropa in Kaguna, he has actually made people. Look at the north, let us make sure we are really mental because most of the renowned politicians from the north, we are all from the uh, Amin Panos uh, School of Politics, that is the style of uh, politics of uh, Amin Kano. Most of the seers of uh, today, we are actually tutored or mentored by Amin Kano. So the older generation should look in that direction to actually mentor the youth of today. As we wrap up, that, let's uh, take a few when you, Peter, expect you've said it, that we hope we'll get a youth to head the Minister of Youth Supplement. Uh, just as you run it up, uh, what should we be expecting from our youth ministers? Let me put them down there collectively. All, uh, let me just add to the issue. Okay. In South Africa, the ANC, the African National Congress, admits people who are up to 10 years 15 years mm. old. was became a member of the ANC at the age of 14, rose to become the leader of the ANC, eventually the president of the country through that uh, platform. We would want political parties to recruit young people, or young people to also go to these political parties and learn over time and keep holding positions at lower level until they graduate to holding positions at a high level. Now, to round off, I, I would want to uh, 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 commend the effort of Nigerian youth, Nigerian youth that uh, it, okay. they should come into government. And I also appeal to the president to ensure that he brings more youth to his cabinet. All right, thank you so much, uh, Peter. A.K. Peter as public affairs analyst and I have uh, Mike Anthony, FCT Youth Advocate. Thank you guys for being on the program.